All right, so we have uh, we have Natasha and Shaw here. Okay. Um, all right. So um, I just wanted to, so quick update. Um, uh, so I updated everything to what did it? Okay, no, I don't think I've pushed that change through yet. So um, I've gotten everything done from a compliance perspective for the next release. Um, I figured out luckily how to greatly simplify my compliance problems. Um, this is internal compliance stuff that I have to do um, for Intel. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so, so the last thing, but, but that resulted in, in the upgrade of, uh, TensorFlow, um, 2.4, um, got to make sure to, to use the latest versions of things. Um, and, uh, so in the process, uh, upgrading to TensorFlow, TensorFlow 2.4, um, uh, Transformers, uh, then needs to be updated um and when you update transformers to the 4.x release um then uh things break um so it's a major version change so um basically we're gated by issue 844 right now um so so himanshu said that he'd look into that um i think he's looking into it um and, and then then we'll be able to roll the next release so so and and if he doesn't then I don't know. We we can try, um, uh, or we can try to see if there is a three dot x uh, transformers release uh, that um, supports TF two point four. Um, so yeah, I don't I don't know about that one though. I don't know. It would be, yeah, who knows? Maybe they have a three dot x version that supports two point four. We'll we'll find out. Um, yeah. Yeah, hi, hi, John. Actually, hey. your screen is not visible. Oh, oh, okay, great. Thank you. I forgot I was recording, but I wasn't presenting. Thank you for reminding me. Um, let's see. So, and uh, just, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, okay, sweet. Um, and then just as a quick refresher for um, version number education sake. Um, so when people change the um, the first number usually indicates there's been an API breaking change. Um, obviously, we aren't to a 1.0 yet, so we're all API breaking changes. Um, we, we break API um, all the time, so because we got to we got to figure everything out first. Um, and I think just on that note, I think uh, I think we're going to try to have we're going to try to stabilize things for beta, which is going to be the next one, which is going to include that accuracy scoring stuff. Suit Honchu is working on. Um, but uh, we aren't there yet, um, so things are still in flux. Um, so if, if there's major, basically, what that means is is if there's major changes to the way that we call functions, or you know we define classes or, and things like that, uh, we have the command line. Um, we will try to we we're open. The project DFFML is a project. We can change whatever we want right now, um, but then eventually, when, once we say that we're not going to make API breaking changes, so I was thinking beta would be a good place for that. Um, then we're going to uh, we're going to, yeah we're going to stop making big changes to command line flags and stuff like that uh, because people will expect that it doesn't change between uh, minor version numbers, which would be everything that's not the first version number. Um, so and 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 that way people can safely upgrade these two numbers um, of DFFML without having to worry about any of their code breaking. Um, and then when we upgrade the the first number, that means that hey, your code might break. You might need to update stuff. And so that's the situation that we ran into uh, with transformers. Um, but I, I just realized that we could look for a three dot x release that still supports TF uh, two point four. So and that might solve our issue there. All right. Um, so let's see other than that um yeah let's just uh start start um going here so so yash did you have anything that you wanted to talk about today did not particularly i have one problem i'll okay. discuss that in the end all right cool um can you uh can you just what what is it so i can write it for the agenda? It's, it's related to windows like okay, windows, okay. windows issue all right um all right um nitesh um what what do we have for me yeah, actually, I have started uh, working on the source HDF5, so I just wanted to discuss more about on it. All right, great. Very cool. Yeah, the input and outputs, and uh, about the operations also. 
Okay. Uh, because I, I didn't found the much uh, info on the docs regarding operations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sweet. Yes, we need. I, I'm just working on another. Um, <laughs> I just I had another tutorial that I sort of threw together, um, but I haven't written a docs for. I wrote the example the other day, so this is definitely an area where we need more examples. Um, and and Shaw, uh, what do you, what do you want to talk about today? Uh, I want to talk about the way we evaluate NLP models because I was thinking of adding. Uh, we currently don't have that many NLP models, so I was thinking uh, of like improving on that. So I wanted to talk about how we evaluate those. All right, great. Uh, anything else? Uh, yeah, um, we talked about this last week as well, but uh, there was some dependency issue with my pull request. So hopefully if we have time, we could resolve that as well. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. So um, if I forget about things like that, um, <laughs> just keep pinging me on Gitter until I remember because uh, I, uh, I I frequently um, lose track of, of stuff. Um, all right. Okay. A lot going on. Oops. All right, let's see. Um, let's talk about that HD, HDF5 source first. Um, so do you want to share anything or uh, do you want to just talk? Uh, no, no, I want to share. But before right, that, right. Uh, actually, my, my PR is uh, in a queue oh. right now. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes. I think I forgot like to. CBM. Sweet. Oh, yeah. The... I did all the changes as per your review. Okay, great. Yeah, I think I might have. Uh, I think I saw that, and then uh, <laughs> I think I clicked on it, and then it became. Um, um, you know, it, it tells me that there's no notification in there anymore, and then I forget about it. So sorry. Um, let's see. All right, great. Okay, yeah, let's go over that first. It's definitely. Oh, oh, that's right. I think that's gated on. Okay, so I think this guy. Yeah, the issue here was that um, we need to figure out what we're going to do with um, um, the, yeah, this guy. Um, so I was going to look into this, um, but I'm not, I mean, if you want to, so basically we need to figure this out. Um, I think that it comes down, okay, let me just explain what's going on here. So the when we go to do a release, um, we're going to pin all the version numbers of all the packages. Um, and this is because we've had uh, times times in the past where uh, I've had to go and, and change the released package um, because there are incompatibilities between um, between various um, you know dependencies. And when we run them all within the within the uh, main test suite, we we verified that all of these versions of all of our dependencies work together. Um, and since we're installing so many dependencies, uh, we can easily end up in a situation where if somebody upgrades something, then uh, all our, our users can't install the, the end package. So we're going to pin all of the versions when we do a release this time. Um, and that means it's going to be, you know, package name equals equals the specific version number in all of the requirements txt files. Uh, this has upsides and downsides, um, but the uh, the target audience here, um, I think, will will benefit more from this. Um, so so we're gonna we're gonna pin it um, just because that way no one has to wonder why anything is not working, and and if they don't like the pinned version, then they don't they can do this in a virtual environment. So. Um, so we're you know, so there's a there's a command within this uh, service dev. Um, so this is sort of like our, our hacking on DFFML. This is scripts to hack on DFFML itself. Um, in this, uh, let's see, it's in where is it? It's in service dev. Um, so if you type DFFML service dev, and you guys probably use this to create modules and stuff, but this is the this is the code in here that uh, yeah here's the creation module creation code. Um, 
let's see. So there is a um, command in here that does the pin depths. I think it's at the end. Um, yeah, pin depths. All right, so what this does is it goes through and it looks at a um, log. Yeah, it looks at, does it look at the archive or does it look at the file? I can't remember. Um, we have a test for it, but yeah, okay. So it looks at a single file. So right now, I added to the to the CI run in the in the main package where we install every single package, where it'll dump it'll say pip freeze right and pip freeze dumps every single version of, of every Python package that you have installed. So it'll say you know all of the package names equals and then all of the um, the versions for each one. And so what we do here is we we read that file or we read that lo the log file containing that dump. Um, er, the C we read the output of the CI job, and when and and then we go and we read all of the requirements txt files, and we basically say okay for each line in the requirements txt file, each time you find a package, uh, go look up what what the installed version of that package was in the CI job, um, because then we know that you know we know we can safely pin that package to that version. Uh, we know it's compatible. Everything's compatible. Um, so the issue comes in here, right, where we've added a new model. Um, and so now this model is not present in that old CI run. Um, so so the question here is, what do, what do we do? Um, and so there's a, the, the test case, the issue is that the test case is failing, right, because the CI run that the test case is based off of doesn't contain um, the new, it's an old, old log file, right? So we have, we have a couple options, right? We can, I, and so we can update the CI run log file. We can create a new commit whenever we make a model. Um, like whenever we have a pull request that adds a new model, we could have a, a commit in that pull request, which updates the test case here, um, to, um, to, to the log file for that pull request, um, uh, the uh, plugin equals dot, um, which is going to be the, the main the main suite um, that that installs every package. Um, so we can update the log file to be that one, and then it would include all the version numbers. Um, that's the only solution that I've thought of so far. Um, now that it may be the only solution that exists. Um, I think it, that might be the right way to go here. So you may want to do that. Um, I think that would let me merge the pull request. Um, and let's see. Let me just go to the test here. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK. Yes. Um, so and let me just find out where that is here. So I'm going to point you right at it. Um, yeah, OK, here it is. So basically, oh, and this is so here's a here's a trick that, that I use frequently. Um, if you need to include if you if you want to include something. Um, so if you have a file that you don't want to add to a Git repo, um, you can drag it into a GitHub issue and then it'll upload it and you can even delete it from the text of the issue and it'll stay there. Um, and if you have a file format you, it doesn't like, you can just change the extension of the file. Um, so if you ever need to upload, if you ever need some kind of asset that you don't want to put in your 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 source code, you can drag it into a, a, an issue and uh, and then it will live there. And I think I, we actually did this for maybe the, the TensorFlow um, CSV files because they were being, um, the server they were hosted on was, was sort of intermittently failing. Um, and then you can use this cache download function um, to uh, to to download it from from GitHub, and, and that way we don't store it within the Git repo itself. So what you'll do is you'll want to look at the uh, you want to go. Let, we'll just go through the process right now, and then we'll have it on video. So, <clears throat> all right. So when we're adding a new model, we have to update the service dev pin depths test case um, to point at the new um, at, to point at the logs which contain the installed uh, versions of that model's dependencies um, 
And so we go in to the test case run where we've installed every single dependency. And, and so, yeah, this is the test case that's failing. So we look at the raw logs and we should see a bunch of should see a pip freeze command pretty soon here. So the test case for the main package, which is plugin equals dot, which is just DFFML itself, goes through and it, it does service dev install. Um, and that will install every single dependency. Um, so are all of our plugins that we have. And okay, I don't think we made it through the main test suite. All right, this is a problem. Okay, so yeah, it's failing. It's failing out here before we install the plugins. So, oh wait, no, yeah, it is failing. Out, yeah, because this is the old plugin. So, because all right, so the way that the test suite works is we run, we run it once without any of the plugins installed, and then we run it again um, when once we've installed the plugins. Um, so. We need we need we need to change all right and let me just show. So here's run plugin. So this is the function that runs the test suite for a given plugin, right? And so this is dot, meaning that it runs it based on the directory. So this is the top level directory, which is our main package. So it's an, it's not a plugin. Um, and this is let's see. Yeah, so it does it does the, it runs the test. Um, and then it says, okay, if we are not in the main package, run whatever, you know, examples there may be. So if we're in like model TensorFlow, it'll look in the examples directory and it'll run any tests that might be in the examples directory of model TensorFlow. So model slash TensorFlow slash examples. Um, and if we are in the, in the root directory, then we want to go through and we want to run the, the tests for each create. Um, so we go and we create, uh, you know, all of the the various plugin types that we can create. There's stuff in DFFML slash Skell, and then there's a directory for, you know, the, the, the stuff that you might use when you're creating a new model. So it gives you, you know, all the example files that you need and stuff to, to start you off with the package. So we're gonna create all those, we run the tests, and then we go in and we install all of the plugins. And so this, and where is that? Where, yeah, run the examples. We should have a pip freeze in here somewhere. Um, why is there no pip freeze? All right. Um, oh, here's the pip freeze. It's at the very end. Um, yeah, so this, this is the issue is that this test case that checks for the presence of all the plugins, um, that you're able to freeze them runs here and the pip freeze runs at the end after we've installed everything. So we could look at, actually, I think we can look at the docs. Um, I think we, what we can do is we can add the pip freeze to the docs um, CI target because the docs will also install every single test case or every single plugin. Yeah, so we come in here and we install all the plugins. Um, so we can add the pip freeze right around here. Um, line line 175 um so if we add pip freeze there then we can use the log file from the docs ci job um and that will you know give us a list of all the dependencies in and their interrelated versions um that that work together and then we can upload the log file for the docs right so just like how we went here and we did view raw. So basically you just download this file and put it, where is the GitHub issue? You put it in a GitHub issue, or actually you can put it in the body of your pull request if you like. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to make a more formal documentation for all this um, since, but this is the first time we're doing this. So, so yeah, you're gonna just throw that file, throw this file for the docs after we move the pip freeze, throw it, this whole file into the upload it to your pull request, create a new commit in the pull request, a fresh commit. So make sure your commit history is all good so that we can rebase this in. 
and then create a fresh commit that just changes this log file and it's SHA so that we can, um, so that then this test will pass. And that I think will be what we need to do here. And then, and we'll, we'll formally document this process after we've done it once to make sure it works. Um, but we, uh, yeah, so this, this is, this is a bit of a pain, but, um, overall it, we're making sure that the users always end up with a set of packages that work together. Uh, does that, does that all sound good? Do you think you can do that? Yeah, a okay, lot cool. more things to do, but I'll definitely try cool. to do that. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially just move the pip freeze command. So, so the gist of it is, all right, so let me write it down here in the notes. So we're, it, it really, it really should be, um, it should be pretty, it definitely sounds like more work than it is. <laughs> um, so uh, let's see. So move the pip freeze command. Um, actually, let's, let's keep this one here. But basically, we're going to, so move the pip or cop so copy this uh, where's that issue all right and now we're we're basically writing the documentation for this now so um, it's it's pretty short uh, okay so three three ninety eight All right, so we need to move, or we need to copy the pip freeze lines from the run plugin uh, .ci .sh function into the .ci or slash run .sh run docs um, function uh, and then here's the here's the lines to, oops here's the lines to copy um, so you just need to put that um, put that um, after the service dev install command um, and then, okay, so push this as its own commit. And then, um, so within the same PR though. Um, Uh, so now push this as its own commit, which is, or now you need to uh, wait for the docs CI job to run. And then, uh, so save uh, view raw log output, um, upload, save the file, uh, upload it into the PR as within a comment um, and then change the test service test dev uh, um, pin depths test um, to point at the new file with the new hash for that file. All right, yeah, so it's not as much work as that all sounded. I just wanted to give some background there. So this is, it's really basically like a couple lines. I think there's like four lines here that need to be changed. You add two lines and then you modify two lines and you upload the file. So yeah, it's it should be should be pretty, pretty, pretty easy. Um, I mean, those are famous last words though. So let's hope this <laughs> that works. Um, and then we can merge that. All right. So, and then now let's talk about that HD. Is that all sound good? Any questions on that? Uh, no. Uh, let me share my screen. Great.
Is it visible now? Yes. That's what HDF5 config. Uh, basically, it's like a, a directory kind of stuff. So I just uh, take a file name. That's the dot .hdf, the path of dot .hdf5 file name. And then in that file, uh, we have a group path that's basically act like a directory. And in that directory, there is a NumPy kind of data, data that's known as data set. So I just take a data set as a config and read and write aloud. So now uh, I'm just doing a load FD function just because dump FD, I have to work on that. So basically here, I'm just reading HD from HDPY, the file that is passed at the, in the config of file name, and then go to the group path and from that group, I'm just extracting the data set and just loading uh, that data set on that memory. That's it. So that's what I'm doing in the load FD part right now. And it's it's working fine. Uh, here, still look uh, command. Yeah. Actually, I forgot the command, so I have to search in the history part. So uh, that's what is it. The source file name is the test HDF5 that I have generated. And then the group. In that HD5, there is a group called group that's name of the group, and then the data set is T set one, which has a numpy array like that, a zeros of 50, I think. Yep, so that's what done. All right, cool, great. Um, you're off to a good start here. Um, so let's see, so a couple things. Um, and I'm putting these in the minutes, but. Um, minor thing style wise, um, with Python, uh, generally let's try to stick to, um, underscores instead of camel case, unless we're doing a class name. Um, so group path would be group underscore lowercase p path. Um, and then There's something like that. Yep. Snake cool. case, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is, this is, this would be, um, Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, and, uh, okay. And then the other thing is, so it looks like you probably followed the, uh, file source tutorial, um, which is definitely, it's, so you got it working, which is, I'm very excited about. Um, the only thing is that the file source tutorial is meant to be for, um, loading into memory. Right. And I think we had talked about the fact that, that, uh, um, you know, <clears throat> um, these files probably are, 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 are pretty big here, um, you know, sometimes. And so we probably don't want to load the whole thing into memory at once. Right. Um, yep. so what we would like to, so, so that, and that, and that's what the, the file source does. And so we should probably make that more clear. Um, so make a uh, file source tutorial and I because I think this is actually one of the things we noticed last time that this was not clear so uh, clear so th there's there's a one option we can load all this stuff in chunks the data set in the chunks okay um, so we yeah. can load data set uh, uh, in chunks okay so yeah. all right so we want to okay so just real quick um, this is this is a great first start here. Um, we do want to make we do want to use the um, basically the other tutorial, the complex source tutorial, um, because we're gonna you're gonna want to implement that. This abstracts the the this abstracts the source stuff so that it can be backed in memory um, pretty easily. But we don't want to back this in memory. We want it to be just backed by the file on disk. Um, because we don't want to load in these these H, the, these uh, HDF5 files, all all of the contents into memory, just in case there's a lot of stuff there. So we're going to want to implement that record and records methods. Um, so um, so let's see. So let's let's. I think you should probably take a look at the um, complex source tutorial and see how you can make this into something that's more like that. Um, I think that's going to be that's going to be what you want to do here. Um, 
Yeah. And okay. we'll explore, as a side note to that, we're going to explore how we might be able to make this, uh, make it more async IO friendly. Um, because file IO in, in Python is, uh, is there's no, they, they don't, they don't, put it through async io unless there's there's third party modules to do it but but they they don't i don't there should be a way to do that but they don't do it um yeah okay um and so yeah let's take a look at um the complex why don't you take a look at the complex uh source tutorial and it's not i think it's kind of brief um let's see yeah sources so yeah, on the sidebar, if you scroll down on the sidebar, or if you just go and hit next, yeah, example SQL light source. Um, so yeah, so let's keep scrolling here. Yeah, so this this is giving you a bit of background, but basically we're implementing these methods here: record, records, and and update. And so record gets one one record by its key. Yeah, and then records gets everything, so that's basically list everything, and that's probably going to be what your load FD. It's going to be records is going to be very similar to your load FD. Um, so I would go through. I keep going down. This is let's see. Did we end up at the source? Okay, let let's go back. I think we ended up. Yeah. So we keep going. I keep scrolling down here. So this is just showing you what the class definition is. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so keep scrolling down here. Uh, keep going. Yeah, all right. So this this file here and this yeah. So this is this is an example of, of what you might do here. So try to try to make try to update what you have to be um, a base source context class and then a base source class. And so these method the 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 implementation of these methods here. Um, uh, is specific to SQLite, but you're just going to change the body of them to be, you know, whatever whatever you're doing here, um, uh, which with uh, HDF5. Um, so you're going to replace the body, but so so basically you can copy the stuff, you know, remove things in the body, and and, and make it make it you know make it like what you're doing. Um, and so one thing of interest here is going to be that those a inter methods. Um, so if you scroll down to the, the custom SQLite source, so the body of that a inter. So what happens here is, I think we might have talked about this a little bit last week, but um, so within DFFML, everything follows this double context entry pattern. And that's why we have a class and then we have a class context. Um, so first we enter the parent, so the the the, the class that doesn't have the word context in its name, that's the parent class. So base source in this case is, is the parent of base source context. So first we enter base sources context. And that means we call the a inter method of base source and then we call the a exit or we call the a inter method of base source. Now once we've called the a inter method of base source, then we call the a inter method of base source context. So now we'll, first we enter Inter, so we do with on base source. So we say async with base source. Then we do async with base source context. Um, so and when you do async with, that means you're calling the a inter method. Um, so that's 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 the with blocks. Essentially, a with block. When you say with and then a class, it just calls the inter method. And if you do async with, it calls the a inter method. Um, and so what we're doing here is we're making a connection to the SQLite database um, and that's just a file and so with AIO SQLite um, you end up doing a wait um, so if you wanted to do a with statement you would do right if you had a with statement you would effectively call the inter method and if you had an async with statement you would effectively be calling the a inter method so when you look so why don't you pull up the documentation for AIO SQLite right now um, just google for it because this is going to be, I think this is going to clear things up. Uh, what? AIO SQL Lite. So yeah, we'll take a look at their examples and, and, and it'll become a little more clear. All 
All right, okay, so check this out. So you see how, um, so you see how it says async with AIO SQL like connect as DB. So the equivalent of that is if you flip over to um, the source we were just looking at in DFFML. So you, it looks, so we're making a call to AIO SQL like connect. And then we we do async with on the result of that call, um, and and the result of that is as db. So you, basically, you can look if you flip over to the dffml source, you'll see this rewritten as the same thing, only without a with block. Yep. Okay. So yes. Yeah. So flip over to the. Um, okay. I guess we could call db close, but no, it's just copying the the. It exactly. So you flip over back to the DFFML source. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So so they have a close and an, and an open method, but this is this is this is designed to be sort of you and you're going to basically copy paste it. So this is designed. This is written as if you're going to copy paste it, which you essentially you pretty much are. So see how they had that uh, they had that ASIC AIO SQL light. Um, connect call, and uh, then they used they they had async with AIO SQLite connect as DB, right? So they called the connect function, and then so we we call the connect function. We assign that to self underscore underscore DB. Now async with effectively does calls the a inter method on the result of the connect method so that's what we did is we awaited the a inter method and we assigned that to self.db which is what the as db statement does so you're going to pretty much copy this exactly only because you're opening a file so you're going to do hdf5 open and then you're going to assign that to you know self underscore underscore fd or whatever right and then you're going to do self.fd equals, um, you know, self dot underscore underscore fd enter. But you're going to do enter instead of a enter, and you're not going to await it because HDF5, the module, is not an async IO based module. It's a regular module. Um, right. And, and if you're not async IO, if things aren't defined with async def, you're not going to put await. And that's sort of that's just the general rule, right? So if you have a function that's defined async def, then you have to call the function and pre prefix it with await. If there's no async, then you have no await. Um, so uh, does that? I know that's there's a lot going on there. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, and and if that. So this is probably going to be the trickiest part right here, um, and, and I would just sort of I would watch the recording again, um, and and on the a exit, you basically just will do self underscore underscore db underscore underscore exit underscore underscore, um, and then you're not going to pass it any of those values. Um, so because uh, a exit is async and and the other one is not async, so you can't pass it the same values. Um, okay. Um, yeah, that should do it for you. If you're struggling with the a enter method and the a exit method here, don't implement them. Um, and then you can just, I would start with just doing the records method and uh, basically copy what you had in load FD into records and then uh, modify it so that you're yielding a record um, for, for each, each, you know, each uh, record that would be in the source. So that yields a, a record. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, I think, you know, try, try, try to put it into this format and see how it goes and, and just, you know, keep me in the loop. Um, w there's not a lot of, you know, we don't have a lot of data sources. Um, so there's not a, a lot of information to go on here. So we want to make sure, uh, you keep, keep me in the loop and, and, and we'll try to make sure that this is, uh, you know, as clear as possible. Um, and we can update the documentation yeah. appropriately. Does sure, that all sure. sound good? Do you have anything else you want to talk about there? Uh, I think the operation part was left. Yeah. But <laughs> all those steps are already overwhelming. So. Okay, yeah. So we can talk about <laughs> operations next week. Uh, it might be good to move on So because uh, we have some other stuff to talk about. Um, is yeah. there something specific there or just sort of in general? 
about more wanted to know more about operations no just just it generally okay cool so maybe uh, i'll have that tutorial because i had another tutorial i was writing and i might have that done by next week and then and then we might have even more to talk about there so okay uh one more thing actually the docs is not running in my case there there's some error okay inline, inline strong, strong okay so this is probably because so uh check out that file docs plugins dffml model so the way that the docs gets built um it's clean um oh you're in uh yeah i think you can just uh you can just be the file yeah all right so let's go to that line or wait a minute we're on model let's see model yeah. Yeah, okay. And what line was it at 6,000 something? 6096. Okay, 6096. Oh, okay. This is, yeah. yeah, okay. So I think what happened here is, yeah, that light, light, light GBM um, stuff. Uh, that's interesting. Okay, so I think we forgot a R um, in front of the module. Um, so if you scroll down a little bit, um, So see how those that command line is those command line examples are, are uh, uh, they don't have a backslash in them and they're just sort of all concatenated together all the dash sources train uh, the run train command assess the accuracy you see how there's no backslashes and they're all in the same line yes yes, yes. so I think what happened there was we need to have that raw we need to declare the doc string as a raw literal um, which means we need to prefix the block comment um, with a the letter R. So it basically is the letter R and then quote, quote, quote. Um, so if you go into the light GBM um, uh, model definition, the class, uh, just go prefix that with the R. Uh, let, let me check that. Let's see. It's, I'm curious because the CI, I believe, was passing. So that is very curious. Um, Odd, yeah, because I'm seeing I'm seeing it pass in the CI. Uh, let's see. Okay, it is prefixed with R. Hmm, that's interesting. Well, what the hell happened there? Um, oh, what about the regressor? Yep, here is I'm missing. Ah, okay, I'm missing there we right. go. All right, good. <laughs> or else we'd have problems. <laughs> now I'm confused yeah. about why this did not show up in the CI. Um, oh, I think it's because when you started this, it was before. Let's see. Yeah, I think that. Okay, 27 commits behind master. Okay, because so, it's not being built in the CI. That's why. Because uh, I we. Okay. Um, why don't you, can you rebase master to, um, so pull down master and then rebase master into this branch. Um, and so you basically, uh, are you on the branch right now? Uh, no, I think I'm on like GBM branch. Okay. Yeah. That's, but that's, that's the branch that's, uh, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's rebase or do get status. And I can't see. Yeah. That's... Okay, you're on master, it looks like. Actually, I have a multiple copies. Oh, you have so... multiple copies. Okay. Yeah, see if you... Do you know how to rebase master? Yeah, no, no. I, I can. I will do. I will do. Okay, great. Yeah, rebase in master and then... Because I think the thing is that I added... I changed, I changed the way the docs get built recently so that we make sure to build every plugin that we have. And before that, we had to manually add all the plugins to this list of plugins that we wanted to include in the documentation. Now it's just going to include any any DFML plugin that's installed into the documentation. Um, and so that's why the CI job was still passing, even though it was failing here, um, because you were you were um, you had the you had it installed and uh, and we switched um, 
we switched over to building everything that was installed. And since you were building from the master branch version of the docs, it was like, oh, light GBM is installed. Let me go build that. And then it failed. Um, all right, cool. Um, I think it, it's still still there. That error is coming. Inline strong string without inch. Okay, let's go there then. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think you might need to re. What, what line is it? This line. What line is it exactly? Can you do set space and u, or sorry, escape colon set space and u uh, in Vim? Oops. I think I made a change in the wrong file. So yeah, okay. surely I would. I will do that. All right. Yeah. Okay. You'll figure it out. Um, yeah. If you sure. don't figure it out, let let us know on Gitter. Right. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Thanks. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah. Nice work on the source and the, and the light GPM. All right. Um, all right. Let's do. Uh, um, Yash, what was that Windows issue? Is it something quicker? I was actually working on that and it got resolved. Right okay, now. great. I just, right. I'm engaged, but I just looked up what we did last time and did the same. Okay, great. All right, perfect. So Shah, um, let's see. Um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about the NLP models, and then we'll talk about the dependency issue because uh, we'll just work through that. Um, and, and, and if other people need to drop, they can drop. So uh, yeah, so what did you want to talk about with NLP models? You said how we evaluate them? Uh, yeah, so say we have something like a word to work model where you take a word and you provide in a text corpus and the output is the word vector. So how would you evaluate something like this? Uh, do you mean how do we do it or how would we do it? Yeah, how uh, how would you prefer it to be done in the DFFML model? Uh, I mean, do you mean assess the accuracy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, if we're talking about assess the accuracy, I'm going to say don't do it. Um, because um, I think Sutanshu is getting really close on that. So I think we're just not going to worry about accuracy stuff for now. Um, because... I, I don't I don't want to have I don't want I don't want us to do work that's going to get uh, wiped out within a matter of weeks. Um, so I think don't worry about it is my response to that um, because we're going to implement multiple ways. The idea the the idea behind just as a refresher. So Sudhanshu is is going and making it so that accuracy scoring. Um, Accuracy scoring will be, uh, you, you can change what way you score the accuracy of, of any given model. Um, and uh, so you can you could implement all the ways you wanted to. Um, any, if you had several different ways that you wanted to do it, you could implement all of them when he's done. And I think he's got a few NLP related ones that he's already implemented um, based off of the existing NLP models that we had. So we're just gonna hold off on all of that um, until until that's done um he's on phase six out of seven and, and i think it's pretty much done so or well it's nearing it's nearing done so uh yeah let's just hold off on that is that sufficiently answer your question for now uh yeah, yeah absolutely okay cool um the second question i had was um you mentioned an issue where you wanted to add forecasting models is anyone working on that or can i take that one from ah you? yes i just great great question um so forecasting models um i just came across this nice little so i i just okay so uh let me share um so i put together this uh little example somebody asked me about how would one do um COVID data stuff. Um, and, and so I put together yeah. a little... Sorry. Yeah? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, John, but still, your screen is not visible right now. <laughs> oh, oh, I clicked share, and then I didn't select which screen to share. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right, okay. So uh, I put together a little demo, and this is the master docs, and here's, I posted this on Gitter, but now it says the commit. Um, so, uh, yeah, I put together this little example... Um, and the main the main point of this example is to illustrate um, sort of just the Python API and uh, 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 stack feature stacking. 
Um, no, here it is. And uh, so here, here, this. Let's put this here. Um, force casting model. Uh, actually, you know, this it's all in the issue. Um, I just created an issue. Did you see the issue? Um, uh, well, you probably uh, saw yeah. the old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, you you feel free to take this issue. Um, so yeah, just create a new model. Um, and and somebody there's this package darts. Um, was it darts? Yeah. Um. I just saw that I, I checked the trending GitHub uh, page every day um, <laughs> in case there's something that uh, that uh, means that we have to do less work. Um, and this is that. So for casting. Um, okay, here we go. So check this guy out. Um, this basically is a wrapper on, on top of profit and SK time and a few other forecasting things, I think, if I remember correctly. I just barely scrolled through it. Okay, not SK time. Uh, I think SK time is another thing that we'll want to do eventually. But I, I, all I did was quick scroll at it about this pace through that. Um, read me. So I, uh, if, if 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 this turns out to uh, to not be um, something that that is good, then then that that's why because I have not done much looking at it. It's just uh, it looks it looks from from. A screenshot of this page, I would say this is something that we could use. Um, so, yeah, and, and, in, the earlier, uh, in the earlier issue, you've mentioned SK time, which is why I started out with SK time. Cool. Yeah. Do, I mean, do whatever, right? So, so SK time is good. Um, and, and the, 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 for, your format's going to be similar, right? Um, to basically, you know, create the model. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you've got the gist of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, feel free to go for that. And then I did put up this uh, COVID data example, um, which shows how I wrapped I wrapped profit. And speaking of accuracy, I just didn't implement it. And I think I put a little note in that. Or, oh, no, I added to the model tutorial saying that um, don't worry about the accuracy method so much because we're going to be um, getting rid of it. Where did it? Yeah, there it goes. I, I mentioned explicitly. Uh, uh, Sudhanshu's project right here in the tutorial too the other day. Um, but yeah, so you can, I mean, go go for go for SK time, go for this. But yeah, I think some forecasting stuff would be good to add in. In um, you know, having some forecasting models, the SK time I know is really good. This one um, just popped up, so I added it because I try to add. If you guys see models. Um, you know, just throw, you see interesting machine learning frameworks or things, you know, just throw an issue up uh, because chances are somebody can, can, can wrap it, um, you know, and, uh, and then we, we have more models to expose, right? So we want to, we want to create a, a giant library of models for people. Um, all right. Uh, is that, does that suffice to answer your question there? Um, basically, yes, <laughs> do it. That would be great. Yeah, uh, just like one small follow-up. When you say wrap it, you mean the way we wrap something like uh, SKLearn, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, create. You know, I mean, yeah. So when I say wrap, I mean you know implement a model class that uses the library that we're talking about, right? Um, so uh, I'm I'm saying wrap because we're leveraging the you know the computational stuff that's being done by another library which is our dependency if we were writing so the anomaly detection model is not a wrap situation right you implemented that model um wrapping is the the term that i use when when we're uh when when somebody else has done the implementation of the computation algorithm right right cool um All right. Uh, do we have an issue for this? Uh, yeah. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah. Issue seven eighty two. Seven eighty two. Great. Awesome. That'll be great. Yeah. I think I think forecasting stuff would. Uh, it's sort of an, an area that. Um, that we don't have, um, and I think I, I keep seeing more and more stuff about that. So, um, example wrapping 
F B. Um, so let's see. Uh, that's for now. Uh, one second, waiting for uh, accuracy uh, changes. All right, great. Um, Um, so now the dependency issue. So does anybody have anything else uh, before we get into this uh, dependency issue? Because you never know how long these things take. All right. Okay. So let's check this out. Um, Multivariate, uh, wait, uh, yes, uh, okay, I thought it was in a different repo for a second. Uh, da, 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 da. Right, what did we do here? Okay, yeah, we got All right. And what was the issue again? Yeah, it kept filling two CIs for some reason, and um, I think oh, we, yeah. you spoke. It, it had to do with the install, right? And it wasn't detecting the anomaly detection model? Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, run console test, anomaly detection, docs, anomaly model. All right, yeah, let's check out the CI job. So, missing features from anomaly detection. Um, oh yeah, feature. So this just needs to change. Um, Cause I think, yeah, the, and I updated the model tutorial too recently, but um, just make model feature into model features because I believe uh, we changed, um, yeah, the config has features instead of features. So just add the S everywhere, and I think you're good to go. All right. Cool. Yeah, so just write. Oh, and it looks like, oh, this is, oh, this is not the most slipped one. Okay. Yeah, so features, features, and features, and then in the test file too. Yeah. All right, great. Hey, when it just turns out to be a, I hate it when it turns out to be a misspelling and then you spend six hours on it. And it's... <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least we caught it. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. All right, great. Uh, anything from anyone else or? All right, cool. Um, thank you guys. And, uh, have a good, let's see, I hope we didn't end up with anybody else trying to join the call. All right, okay, I forgot to be monitoring. All right, well, thanks, guys, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Yep, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Thanks, thanks. See ya. Bye. Bye-bye.